The United States FTC has recently enforced right to repair laws against Harley Davidson motorcycles and Westinghouse generators. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Let's take a look at what's going on here. The Federal Trade Commission is taking action against motorcycle manufacturer Harley Davidson Motor Group and Westinghouse outdoor generator maker MWE Investments for illegally restricting customers' right to repair their purchased products. The FTC's complaints charged that the company's warranties included terms that conveyed that the warranty is void if the customers use independent dealers for parts or repairs. The FTC is ordering Harley-Davidson and Westinghouse to fix warranties by removing illegal terms and recognizing the right to repair, that they have to come clean with customers and ensure that dealers compete fairly with independent third parties. This is likely partly because of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act from 1975. Products are not required to have a warranty, but if it does have a warranty, it must comply with the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. And it's the FTC that has authority to enforce the act in addition to consumers who sue directly. Consumers deserve choices when it comes to repairing their products, and independent repair dealers deserve a chance to compete, said Samuel Levine, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection. These orders require Harley and Westinghouse to fix their warranties, come clean with consumers, and ensure fair competition with independent providers. Other companies that squelch consumers' right to repair should take notice. Other companies that squelch consumers' right to repair should take notice. Maybe the FTC is signaling that it's about to start enforcing right to repair issues against companies like John Deere, who restricts their tractors' repairs to authorized dealers only, or the one-wheel problem where Future Motion restricts repairs to authorized dealers only, or I think it's actually the one-wheel manufacturing plant in California is the only place that's authorized to do those repairs. Maybe that's changing. I hope that's changing. This should help push it in the right direction. Wisconsin-based Harley-Davidson sells motorcycles worldwide, and Ohio-based MWE Investments, we're going to call them Westinghouse, sells Westinghouse brand outdoor power generators and related equipment. Each company offers limited warranties to consumers who buy their products that provide for no-cost repair or replacement should the products have defects or other issues. The FTC has made it a priority to protect consumers' right to repair their products. The Magnuson Moss Warranty Act is one of the FTC's tools to address repair restrictions. The act prohibits a company from conditioning a consumer product warranty on the consumers using any article or service which is identified by brand name unless it is provided for free. Following the FTC's right to repair report nixing the fix, the commission issued a policy statement on repair restrictions imposed by manufacturers pledging to ramp up investigations into illegal repair restrictions. According to the FTC's complaints, both companies were imposing illegal warranty terms that voided consumers' warranty if they used anyone other than the companies and their authorized dealers to get parts or repairs for their products. The FTC also alleged that Harley-Davidson failed to fully disclose all of the terms of its warranty in a single document, requiring consumers to contact an authorized dealership for full details. The FTC alleges that these terms harm consumers and competition in multiple ways, including first, restricting consumers' choices. Consumers who buy a product covered by a warranty do so to protect their own interests, not the manufacturers. The company's warranties improperly implied that as a condition of maintaining warranty coverage, consumers had to use the company's parts or services for any repairs. Next, costing consumers more money. By telling consumers their warranties will be voided if they choose third-party parts or repair services, the companies force consumers to use potentially more expensive options, provided by the manufacturer, of course. This violates the Warranty Act, which prohibits these clauses unless a manufacturer provides the required parts or services for free under the warranty, or is granted an exception from the FTC. It also undercuts independent dealers. The Warranty Act's tying prohibition, so this is part of antitrust's anti-tying prohibitions, 
The Warranty Act's tying prohibition protects not just consumers, but also independent repairers and the manufacturers of aftermarket parts. By conditioning their warranties on the use of authorized service providers and branded parts, the companies infringe the right of independent repairers and manufacturers to compete on a level playing field. Also, reduced resiliency. Consumers rely on the company's products for emergency power and for transportation. Robust competition from aftermarket parts manufacturers is critical to ensuring that consumers get the replacement parts they need when they need them and are not at the mercy of branded parts supply chains. More resilient and repairable products also lead to less waste in the form of products that could otherwise be fixed. Under the FTC Act and the Warranty Act, the FTC has the authority to take action against companies violating consumer protection laws, including those engaging in unfair or deceptive acts or practices. The FTC's orders in these cases prohibit further violations. The companies will be prohibited from further violations of the Warranty Act and, in Harley-Davidson's case, the Disclosure Rule. They will also be prohibited from telling consumers that their warranties will be void if they use third-party services or parts, or that they should only use branded parts or authorized service providers. If the companies violate these terms, the FTC will be able to seek civil penalties of up to $46,500 per violation in federal court. The enforcement recognizes consumers' right to repair. Both companies will be required to add specific language to their warranties saying, quote, taking your product to be serviced by a repair shop that is not affiliated with an authorized dealer of the company will not void this warranty. Also, using third-party parts will not void this warranty. The enforcement action requires them to come clean with their consumers. Both companies must send and post notices informing consumers that their warranties will remain in effect even if they buy aftermarket parts or patronize independent repairers. And, the enforcement actions alert dealers to compete fairly. Both companies are now on notice and are being required to direct authorized dealers to remove deceptive display materials, train and monitor employees, and not promote branded parts and dealers over third parties. The FTC's vote to issue the administrative complaints against Harley and Westinghouse and to accept the consent agreement, which would be the stipulated or agreed upon resolution of those complaints, was unanimous, five to zero. Chairman Lena M. Kahn and Commissioner Rebecca Kelly Slaughter Slater issued a statement. We'll read that in a moment. The FTC will publish a description of the consent agreement package on the Federal Register soon, so we'll look for that too. The agreement will be subject to public comment for 30 days, so I guess it's actually on the Federal Register already. Let's take a look at that in a moment. And there, there's a notice and comment procedure for the, for the settlement. Meanwhile, the joint statement of Lena M. Khan and Rebecca Kelly Slater Slaughter. In July 2021, the Commission unanimously adopted a policy statement that committed the agency to prioritizing enforcement actions tackling unlawful repair restrictions. Today's enforcement actions, the first addressing unlawful repair restrictions since we adopted the policy statement, mark an important step forward, demonstrating our commitment to vigorously protecting Americans' right to repair. We are grateful to the Bureau of Consumer Protection staff for their excellent work driving this effort forward. Illegal repair restrictions can significantly raise costs for consumers, stifle innovation, close off business opportunity for independent repair shops, create unnecessary electronic waste, delay timely repairs, and undermine resiliency, harms that can have an outsized impact on low-income communities in particular. It is critical that unlawful repair restrictions continue to be a key area of focus for the Commission and that we will continue to use all of our tools and authorities to root out these illegal practices. So this is the first enforcement action since July 2021 when they announced that they're going to start enforcing the law. Now, what would have happened in the background? The FTC would have researched and gathered complaint material, a record against Harley Davidson and Westinghouse. And then they would have contacted Westinghouse and Harley Davidson and said, hey, this is our complaint. We're going to do this. How do you respond? And there would have been sort of a private interaction behind the scenes. And that's why now they make it public because they reached an agreement. They're going to put that agreement on the Federal Register for everyone to review. And then assuming that there's no changes to the agreement based on those comments, then that'll be the final thing. Let's take a quick look at what's on the Federal Register. 
Well, it looks like it hasn't hit the Federal Register yet, or maybe I haven't found it. Uh, I'll make a separate video about that if that turns out to be something interesting. So let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Also, remember that you can use the FTC's website to report right to repair issues. The website is reportfraud.ftc.gov, and it takes you through the whole thing about how to, how to make a report, and if enough people make reports about things like the one-wheel issue, for example, maybe the FTC will be in contact with Kyle from Future Motion. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Love you all. See you in the videos. Bye. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my top supporters in June. John Steele, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hytov, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Shadow Tycho, Good Broge, Pure Magma, Eric Tams, Tech Tech Potato, The Blood Soaked Survivors, Wyatt Calandro, and King Aries. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJ French, Sponsus.com slash Law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for our weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.